All right, let's move on to histology of the nervous system. We're going to start off with a neuron. So this is showing a neuron here. Uh, a neuron is a nerve cell, right? Nerves, uh, these nerve cells that we have in our body are long-lived. Most of them will live as long as we do, right? Which is very different from a lot of other cells in our body. Uh, skin cells live about a month, red blood cells a couple months, some things can live years, but our, our nerve cells live as long as we do in most cases. Most of our nerve cells are amitotic, they don't divide. One of the functions of mitosis, right? Uh, so the function of mitosis is maintenance, uh, repair, um, you know, uh, growth and development, right? So most of them are not gonna divide. So with that, one of the things that we know about the nervous system is if we damage it, it's not going to repair itself. Just think about anybody who has a spinal cord injury, that spinal cord stays damaged, right? There's really only, and if you have my notes, my notes say uh, mostly on this. And why mostly is there are a couple places in which uh, we do have neurons that divide. One place is in your olfactory epithelium. You have olfactory neurons there uh, that will replace over time there. Uh, and that's because we can uh, smell things that can actually damage neurons there, so we replace those over time. Uh, another place is in your hippocampus. Our hippocampus is one of the places in our brain in which we store memories. So we have mitotic divisions occurring in our hippocampus that allow us to store more memories. And so hopefully what's occurring in your hippocampus right now is it's undergoing mitotic divisions that are allowing you to store the information that we have mitotic divisions occurring in our hippocampus. So, uh, moving on. Uh, uh, neurons have a very high metabolic rate, right? And the reasons for that is that uh, a nerve impulse is very costly. And we'll get to uh, why that is here in a little bit, all right? All right, so let's look at the parts of a neuron. One is the cell body. So this part right here is the cell body, what we see there on that picture as well. So this is a rounded area of the neuron. This contains a nucleus and other organelles in it. Uh, the uh, cell body is found within the central nervous system or within ganglia. And so ganglia are, uh, is a collection of nerve cell bodies outside of the central nervous system. All right, so only two places for those uh, neurons, or uh, so those cell bodies. Next is the axon. So this is an axon. This is an extension off of the cell body that sends an impulse. All right. Uh, there is only one of these per neuron. All right. And it's usually myelinated. So this white stuff that you see here, they call a Schwann cell, that is myelin. All right. And so what myelin is, is an insulating cover around an axon. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about myelin uh, more specifically after we talk about what a nerve impulse is. Now, if you've ever heard of parts of our brain and spinal cord having white matter and gray matter, white matter is where these axons are covered uh, with myelin, and gray matter is where they are not. All right. So if we look at dendrites, that's what all these little branches are, and that's what dendrite means, a branch. Uh, dendrites, these are appendages off of a cell body that receive impulses, all right? So an axon will be connected to those and they're receiving impulses from that. So a neuron could have many dendrites to actually having no dendrites on there, all right? Uh, dendrites, unlike axons, are not myelinated. All right, let's take a look at the classification of neurons. All right, so let's go to this picture here. So two ways in which we classify neurons. Uh, one is structurally and the other is functionally. So let's look at the structural differences here. So the first are multipolar neurons and that's what we see here is a multipolar neuron. So this is a nerve cell that has many appendages. So you can see many appendages coming off of that cell body. Uh, they have one axon, several dendrites on there. These are the most common types of neurons. About 99% of our neurons are multipolar. Next are unipolar. So that's what we see here is a unipolar neuron. So this is a nerve cell that has only one appendage coming off its cell body. So that one appendage is all axon. All right. So here the impulse doesn't actually go into the cell body. It just continues along in that axon there. Uh, these are found in some of our, sens uh, our sensory neurons, which we'll talk about that in a minute. Next are bipolar neurons. So this is a bipolar neuron. It has one dendrite, one axon. Uh, so there's a nerve cell with two appendages, all right? 
Uh, this is found in special sense organs, so our olfactory neurons are these guys. Uh, some of the cells in our retina, uh, which we see with, are also bipolar. Let's look at functional differences. Uh, one uh, are sensory neurons. A sensory neuron is a nerve cell that conducts impulses from a per peripheral body part to the central nervous system. All right, so out from the body to the brain and spinal cord. Uh, these guys are unipolar, so these guys over here, and their cell bodies are found within ganglia, so laying outside. So this is outside of the central nervous system. Next are motor neurons. So this is a nerve cell that conducts impulses from the central nervous system out to effectors. So coming out from the brain, causing my hand to move. Okay, uh, these guys are mostly multipolar, and their cell bodies are within the central nervous system. So the neurons that are causing my hand to move right here, their cell bodies are way back here in my spinal cord. Okay. Next is an inner neuron. This is a nerve cell that conducts uh, impulses through sensory nervous system pathways where integration occurs. So this is between a sensory neuron and a motor neuron. And these guys are mul mostly multipolar. About 99% of our neurons are interneurons. They're within our brain and spinal cord. Let's just go back to um, this picture here, and this shows uh, that pathway that we talked about. So here's a sensory neuron, their cell body is outside the central nervous system. Here's an inner neuron, and then next is a motor neuron there, all right? So an inner neuron is always gonna be between a sensory and a uh, motor neuron. Now in this case, this is showing reflex, which a reflex, we typically only have one inner neuron, but you know, if you're talking about something like going up to a light and deciding on whether you know uh, you should go through that yellow light or put your brakes on oh hundreds to thousands of inner neurons maybe even more are involved in those that processing all right now our nervous system doesn't just have neurons it also has these other cells called neuroglia so neuroglia are essentially supporting cells Another way to think about them is they're kind of like the connected tissue cells of the nervous system, all right? And so some of these neuroglial or just glial cells are found in the central nervous system, some are found in the peripheral nervous system, so this guy here, okay? So this is showing the ones that are found in our central nervous system. So we're gonna start off with these guys here, and these are astrocytes. So this is showing astrocytes here. So astrocytes, these are cells that provide a myelin sheath. Um, I'm sorry, no, they don't provide myelin sheath. These are cells that provide structural support. They transport nutrients and waste between the neurons and capillaries, and they can also form scar tissue. All right, so structural support in here. As you can see, here is an astrocyte between uh, a blood vessel and then also a neuron. So uh, nutrients will go in that direction. Waste products will go in the opposite direction. Astro, by the way, means star, star-shaped cells is what, literally what the cell means, okay? All right, next are microglial cells. This is a blow-up of a microglial cell. These are small phagocytic cells, and they're used for defensive reasons, all right? So, you know, pathogens get in there. Microglial cells will try to eat them. Next are ependymal cells. Ependymal cells are cells that line cavities in the central nervous system. So we actually have four cavities within our brain. Uh, which are called ventricles. And we also have a tube that goes down the middle of our spinal cord called the central canal. And all those are lined by ependymal cells, all right? Now, ependymal cells, these down here, ependymal cells, are gonna produce the cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF. Now, these cells here have cilia on there to move that uh, uh, CSF uh, throughout uh, and around our brain and spinal cord. All right. Lastly here are oligodendrocytes. So oligodendrocytes are cells that provide a myelin sheath on, around axons in the central nervous system. So here's an oligodendrocyte. Oligo means few, dendro means branches. So it's a cell with few branches. All right, but here it is. So this is what it does. It produces a myelin sheath around axons in the central nervous system, okay? Now, let's take a look at the neuroglial cells that are found in the peripheral nervous system. So go into this picture here. So the first ones are satellite cells. So these little guys here are satellite cells. That's a neuron cell body that they're surrounding. So these are cells that surround neuron cell bodies uh, within ganglia. And they have similar functions uh, to astrocytes. 
transporter nutrients, forming scar tissues, uh, supporting that area as well. Next are Schwann cells. These are Schwann cells here. Now Schwann cells are cells that provide a myelin sheath around the axons in the peripheral nervous system. So if you notice that uh, the definition for a ligodendrocyte and the definition for Schwann cell is almost exactly the same. The only difference is where they do this function. Oligodendrocytes provide a myelin sheath around the axons in the central nervous system, while Schwann cells provide a myelin sheath around the axons in the peripheral nervous system. 